Have you seen all these fast, hell-capable vehicles on YouTube recently? I even made one myself. The only issue with all of them is they do require stake nudging in order to build, and it seems not everyone's able to put it together or even wants to spend several hours trying. What options does that leave you? And is stake nudging really necessary in order to build a fast hill climbing vehicle? Well, the short answer is kind of. The long answer is the rest of this video. This is the No Nudge ATV. It's got a super tight turning circle. It's pretty quick. It's really strong and it's amazing going up hills. And most importantly, it doesn't require stake nudging to build. And we're gonna show you how to do it now. So here's the layout. It utilizes the same technique as the stake nudged version with the raised central wheels driving outer wheels. Now, this build can be thrown together in a variety of ways, but you might find that the wheels are a bit unstable. The key to this build are the small wheels and big wheels we're going to place in order to stabilize the wheels that are driving on the ground and raise the middle ones. As you can see, poor placement leads to a really unbalanced vehicle, but I've tested this extensively and I've come to a design that works. So I'll show you ideal placement and explain what happens if things are out of position. Let's get on with the build. You'll need 10 big wheels, 4 small wheels, a cart, a steering stick, and two square metal poles that are found in the Tarakamic Shrine, just near the entrance of the Gerudo Desert. Make your way through the shrine until you reach the gears, and then rip off the pole and fuse it to something. I'd recommend you go out and come back in and fuse a second one, as it'll make building a bit easier. Unfuse these with Pelissin at Tarrytown, and take them down to the construction yard where you'll find most of the other materials needed. Once you've got everything together, we're going to construct the vehicle in three parts. The front wheel assembly, the rear wheel assembly, and then the middle, which will connect the two wheel assemblies together. We'll start with the axles, which involves connecting two big wheels together facing opposite ways. We'll do this a second time, but with the directions of the big wheels reversed. Pay attention to the direction of the big wheel arrows, as I've got this wrong myself in the past, and it's a pain to have to redo it. We then need to connect these two parts together, ensuring that the two middle wheels are both facing the same direction and that both outer wheels are both facing the other way. Do the spin test to make sure you've got it centered and we'll use auto build to build a second axle. From here, the build gets a lot more precise as every part placement is vital to ensuring good performance. We're aiming to have the top small wheels and big wheel in the middle here arranged in such a way that they create downward pressure creating a separation between the outer wheels and inner wheels that are on the ground. To achieve that we need careful placement and alignment between these three elements. We need them close enough together to create that ride height but too close and the wheels will become loose and the middle big wheel will rub up against the poles. Too far apart and you might not even have enough ride height to get moving. It'll also leave a gap between the poles and the middle big wheel which has undesirable results. After much testing this is the best position for the pole on the front wheel assembly. You might not be able to tell because of the angle but the pole isn't perfectly centered here it's just slightly towards the right or towards the back of the vehicle. Take one of your wheel axles and prop it up on a stake so the outside wheels sag down. Attach the middle pole in the position we previously discussed and make sure that there's an equal overlap between left and right outside wheels. That looks about right, so it's time to add the small wheels. If you've got the metal pole in the correct position, you'll find that the small wheels won't go on unless you tip the whole thing 45 degrees. Remember, the small wheels go on with arrows facing the opposite direction to the big wheels. These can be a little fiddly to get on, especially with all the flex in the wheel axle. And as you can see in this example, I've had to use one of the small wheels attached to the outer big wheels to weigh it down. That gave enough space for the small wheel to be attached to the pole. You do need to be careful doing this, or if you're using any stakes to try and force the small wheel into position, because if you've got too much compression there, they'll just ping off when you move things around. And that's the front wheel assembly complete, time to work on the back. For the rear wheel assembly, the metal pole is set much further back. Feel free to take screenshots and use these diagrams as reference by the way. Before we continue, I want to point out that the metal poles have specific glue points. You can only attach the metal pole to one of the two middle wheels, so to keep the vehicle balanced we've got them on opposing sides here. We'll do the same with the middle part, which we'll add later. 
when you have the metal pole in position we're going to tip the wheel assembly 45 degrees again and we'll attach the small wheels facing the opposite way to the big ones. My axle wasn't sitting level here so I've used a small wheel to weigh down one side. No such problems on the other side though and other than being a bit slippery it seems to go on fairly easy. Just got to press down and be patient. And with that the rear axle is now done. Time to work on the middle part. Starting with an upside down car attached to a stake, we're going to connect two big wheels on each side. But we're not going to use the snap point on the ends of the car here. Instead, we're going to place it on top, or technically underneath. Try and get these as symmetrical as possible. When you've got it in place, remove the stake and then you should have the three components ready to assemble the final vehicle. The next step is crucial so you might want to save these three separate parts into your all build favourites and that way if anything goes wrong it's easy to rebuild stuff. We're going to flip the cart the right way up and we're going to attach it to the back wheel assembly. Placement here is really important because we've already got the metal poles and small wheels in position we've got a limited range in which we can actually place the middle part and yield the desired results. Put simply, the cart in the middle is connected to the back higher up and attached to the front lower down. This means the cart will be leaning forward, which will make going up hills much easier. In addition, this angled attachment is going to help reorientate the metal poles exactly where we need them to be so that the small wheels can contain the main driving wheels. What you're trying to do is attach one of the cart wheels onto the middle wheels in the rear wheel assembly. Remember to be mindful of the glue point because we want to keep these balanced. You'll probably find if you just initially line it up there won't be an attachment point until so you press down as there is quite a lot of give in the big wheels so just be patient. I found this quite annoying to get and it took me multiple attempts but one thing to consider is I'm doing this for demonstration purposes without a stake. You could make it a lot easier for yourself just by attaching the middle to a stake and then lining it up with the rear wheel assembly. This will stop it from slipping around so much and you can take your time lining things up a bit better. You can also tip the rear wheel assembly 45 degrees and that will give you a better view when it comes to attaching the car wheel. It's then just a matter of staking the front wheel assembly into the ground and then lining up the back and attaching it. Obviously this is easier said than done but hopefully you'll get it quicker than me because I've honestly spent over a week developing this and gone through tons and tons of iterations. But there we have it. Attach the steering stick to the car on top and we're done. Now I'm more than aware that there's a lot that can go wrong with this build. I've gone through a million failures trying to develop a build process that will work and that's what I've shown you today. I've even gone through the process of following the guide myself from scratch and managed to build a vehicle that works just fine. Equally as good as the original that was tweaked and fine tuned over days. So yeah, why not give it a try? No stake nudging required. Just a bit of time, patience and maybe a screenshot or two for reference. Alright, let me know what you think. Cheers, bye.